Let's just preview the debate a little bit tonight. Um, start off with this uh, this guy on CNN. Um, this is, I think, uh, I mean, I think this is sort of accurate in some way. Um, it, sort of, but there's there's one premise. Let's see if you can figure this out. What this premise is that is that is mistaken here, right? When he talks about Twitter. Twitter Democrats. Democratic Party right now. A real concern among some more centrist Democrats, establishment Democrats, that the party is moving too far left, that they're chasing uh, Twitter headlines instead of where the majority of the American people may be. That concern exists in certain circles. And I think tonight there is going to be this, I would imagine, assertion from folks who are not in the center of the stage, who are more moderate, to try and make that case and appeal to that sensibility, that concern in some quarters of the party that the policies that Warren and Sanders particularly are driving forth may be uh, uh, too far left. I will just say, Warren and Sanders have been fighting against that theory their entire political lives. All right, well, here's the problem with, the, with the, just the, the whole theory that this guy postulates. If it was the case that it's just Twitter Democrats, as he says, that are driving this sort of push to the left, why is it that no one else on that stage will be polling in double digits other than Warren and Bernie Sanders? Like, I mean, and it's not even close. You got Buttigieg, I think it was around seven, maybe, maybe eight. Maybe eight, probably closer to seven on an average. I'm just I'm talking about the yeah, you gotta average these polls. And seven or eight. Yep. And then everyone else, no one I think breaks three percent. And that may be generous. So you have to ask yourself if it's just about chasing Twitter, how is it that Twitter and and it's true, there's there's not a lot of people on political Twitter, as it were. Certainly not how 33% is it, of How people. is it possible that they are commanding between the two of them a plurality, it appears at this point, close to it, of the Democratic vote? How could that possibly be the case? On top of which, I still contend that I don't know that other than the labeling that is done by people like that and by the centrists, that people really care about the labels. It really is just sort of like how you uh, wear it, I think. They care about your instincts. They care about, I do think some policies have salience for people, but I agree with you. And I, and I think, yeah, not only do people not care about labels broadly, I think you still see, depending on your, like, in certain social environments, I see people wanting to claim the tag socialist when they are definitely not because they perceive it as cool and trendy. And then in other social environments, I see people that are extremely left who still like to say, you know, I'm a moderate. Also, who are these establishment voters that he keeps referencing? Like, I like it when they make people up uh, and then you're like, oh, it's you. Yeah, of course. I mean, I don't think it's him necessarily. Uh, but certainly the people who are espousing this, they're talking about themselves. A lot of people are saying. Well, a lot of people are saying. Yeah, like there's, there's not a poll. There's not. A, I want to see some numbers on that. Well, all that's right. what they always mean is they're small social groups. Because as I've said a gazillion times, like socially moderate and maybe even in some areas to the right and absolutely economically populist and left would be where you would find so-called swing voters. And they're always invariably talking about people that are I wouldn't even say socially left. I would say quasi-socially tolerant and right-wing corporate economics. All right, Kamala Harris is not going to be on uh, tonight, so let's tomorrow play, let's night, say right? that uh, for tomorrow night. Um, what's this? Who's this guy? Uh, this is uh, Robert Wolf, former econ- economic advisor to President Obama. All right, let's just do uh, this one, and then um, uh, I'll, one more point about uh, Warren's got a proposal today that I imagine will come up in the uh, debate, but uh, this is the Road to 2020 on Fox News. This guy, Wolf, is uh, going to blow... Is this Ainsley Earhart again? Yeah. Blow her mind with his uh, description of the Democrats. 
So who's going to be fighting in the debate tonight? Who are they going to go after? Probably Warren. Well, I, she's ahead. Yeah, I, I think right now on stage you have a bunch of moderates tonight. You have like Beto and Mayor Pete and Tim Ryan and Klobuchar, and it's easy to go you after. You call them moderates? Versus, you... versus, versus where Bernie and Warren okay. are? I mean, we're all, with, is not moderate. we're all with, I'm talking within the party. Okay. Well, he's not for Medicare for all. So, right. so there's a few things he hasn't been for. Same with Beto. So you have real debates, whether it's on open borders or Medicare for oh, all or student yeah. loans that you guys were chatting mm -hmm. about. And, a, and to me, you have to kind of punch up. But more importantly, you got to let people know what you stand for. And that's what the, the party's not doing enough of. Right, now, the idea that the party's not doing, first of all, open borders... He's making that up. Yeah, maybe at but, the DSA convention. But the idea of the party's not making it known what it stands for, there's literally a debate with 20 candidates, each one of them racing out with their pro policy proposals earlier and in more depth than I think I've ever seen. Compare this to what the Republican Party's last primary was like. I'm going to build a wall. And then uh, Jeb Bush would say, well, I'm going to build a bigger wall. And then uh, Marco Rubio would say, well, I'm going to build a thicker wall. That was basically the policy debate during the, uh, during the I mean, so this is just absurd. Um, we're getting a good uh, a debate on policy. We're not seeing a ton of details on all these things. So it's a little bit difficult to sort of follow them uh, on some respects. Uh, I can tell you that Kamala Harris's uh, Medicare for All proposal is uh, taking uh, a bit of a hit, particularly on the 10-year waiting period, because people realize, like, wait, they did the math, and they found out that if Barack Obama had tried to push the ACA with a 10-year window, then Donald Trump would have been the one who would have been responsible for implementing it. So that this. seems like a non-starter, exactly, from uh, the get-go. Um, the other interesting thing is, there was pushback from Bernie Sanders' Medicare for All uh, for folks saying that her plan is not really a Medicare for All. Now, the irony is... Yeah, they sent is, an email. What's that? They sent an email. Yeah. The irony is that, as I've been saying in the past, that Bernie's Medicare for All bill is really like a Medicaid for All because it's more generous. It's more inclusive, it would be Medicare insofar as maybe the reimbursement rates would be closer in line with Medicare. Uh, more people would take it. More people are aware of it, but they specifically wanted to brand it Medicare because that doesn't have the stigma, apparently, that Medicaid does. So there's some brouhaha there where the, the, the Harris people are saying, well, yours is really a Medicaid for all, but this and that. It's at the end of the day... Um, her proposal was, I think, put out in many respects to seem like a moderate version of Bernie's plan, when in fact it was just one that does not appear to, to make sense because of it. The 10-year thing doesn't make sense, and the Medicare Advantage element of it doesn't make sense because people go to Medicare Advantage because it's more generous, not so much if, if you get really sick, but it's more generous if you don't get really sick but, the, but Bernie's version of the Medicare for All plan would, would provide those things. So it doesn't quite make any sense. But I just, can I just say really briefly, too, that, I mean, and the phase in is a matter of lives, too. I mean, you, you elongate that, you're putting more people's lives at risk. The same way that, you know, Joe Biden's just unbelievable lies and fear mongering, you know, even under Obamacare, which I'm the first to admit that it's not what I want, but it of course has improved health care. There's still tens of millions of people without health insurance, and there's still plenty of people who have health insurance but don't properly use it because they can't afford deductibles Deduct, and right. so on. And can I just say, I'm really glad that Bernie is pushing back on this and showing where they differ on this policy because that's the kind of thing that we were hoping he would do going into the first debate and maybe didn't do so well. Well, she didn't have a proposal at that time. Yeah. Um, also...